defense on the maps they haven't practiced or scrimmed as much as they have uh, in matches. Uh, interested to see what they pull out here on defense. Maybe they'll say standard triple tank, or maybe we'll see a Torb or some type of other nonsense. Make what about Sombra, guys? What about her? What do you think? Do we is Nomi just pulling yep. the? Uh, well, he's obviously giving the Reinhardt player, of course. But I mean, we have seen this from uh, complexity on this particular map here. Do you really think it's just them? It is. It, it is. More teams should be doing it. More teams should be abusing Sombra when they're not. Okay. Well, C9 have the uh, the cute setup we talked about before. It's got to be Mendo on the Torbjorn, Adam on the Mercy here. So still double support. Rook will be there. Yeah. And uh, they're going to have Shaw 4 and the Soldier 76 now. How do we feel about that singing on Dorado and the previous series, guys? Was it solid enough, or is this a big risk? I don't think Torb has been solid enough to consistently pick him, but uh, apparently Mendo is very comfortable running Torb. He runs it on first and second points on certain maps. We'll see if it works out here, but I think when you know 100% you're running into a D.Va who just hard counters Torb, it's not the greatest idea, but we'll see. They're, they're going to try to roll with it. If they can keep themselves alive to maybe get some value off of Molten Core, it could be worth it. Oh, I love that fast push play coming out here as well from Immortals, but it might not be enough here because the damage coming through. Wolf again on the scoreboard. He finds Grim Reality, but now it's getting turned around a little bit. It should be a 2v2. It was a turret taken down by Agilities, but still, that's important to get rid of now as Nomi did manage to get underwards Kai Kai. Not the charge he was looking for, though. Backing away now, Rip with the shield up in front. Again, forcing Immortals back out. It's time for them to regroup. Now the turret keeps going down, so if that turret is down, not in level 2, it will not become a level 3 molten core turret. He's going to put it in the house. That's how afraid of he is of getting it killed. So they are able to roll and get a first kill on Adam. Adam has was on Mercy. Uh, the first wave of fights got taken out very early. Now on a Lucio, and they continue to clean up as they're pulling it in here. Good decision making by Nomi. Goes straight for the turret while he had the Nana Beast. He knew he could shrug off the damage, and he knew that Mendo was probably close to a molten core. So that was well played by him. And Immortals just waltz onto the point there. Sure, uh, 4 eventually gets headshot by Grim Reality. They're just execution style, I guess. And Adam will try and get onto the point. He splashes as he hits the ground. And this is such good responses from Immortals. Every time someone from the side of C9 even dares to set foot on the point, they get CC'd and killed in one hit. Well, I guess the good thing is that it bought Mendo time to set up so that those two seconds where his turret was alive really mattered as he gets taken out and his turret gets taken out as well. He had uh, Molten Core at the ready. He was just far forward, didn't get anything off it. And Mendo is now onto a more useful hero in D.Va. This, this Torb has just not done anything the last two days. Are hey, you going to upset Slash with the keep uh, bad mouthing Torb? Right? I made that mistake. Put, put, put the pirate hat on him. Put the pirate hat on Slasher again. It's just done nothing. I'm sorry. I deal with the objective reality of Torb not doing anything in these games. That was a really nice charge there from the backside from Hype. He knocked both tanks off the high ground. He just forced the engagement out of Cloud9. That's a drop down. Transcendence was also used, and now Nomi has yet another Earth Shatter, but he doesn't connect it. And has the mana boost, needs to make use of it, so he charges forward to get in range to get that damage down. He's taken down by Mendo, though, that Diva getting up close and personal. To Reinhardt on his home ground, will be sent back to spawn, and Mendo able to slip away with a rocket boost. Yeah, the first fight that Cloud9 won, it was without a Torbjorn. A coincidence, you make your own judgments. Rolf got really far in the back line there. He's lucky to get out. So they're going to just reassess here on the high ground. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have any ultimates to use. So they're just going to hold the high ground, but they're giving up a lot of free push on this cart here. They can't really jump down and fight. They're going to have to at some point. They're jumping in the sound there. Oh, nicely done by Flap. Goes in over the top and Kai Kai and Shaw for, excuse me, being taken down by that self-destruct. A good opening to the fight there as well. Eventually, Immortals were going to have to receive some sort of fight from the side of C9. And they responded perfectly, just laying the self-destruct in wait. And C9 had to engage eventually. They couldn't let the pay advance for free. And this is pretty fast-paced stuff here for Immortals now. They're going to be rounding the last bend before the last point. And look at Agility. He's going deep, trying to get an early hook and force a 65. Great biotic grenade there used by Ace on towards Agility to keep alive. I mean, Immortals looking like a well oiled machine so far. Yeah, they've had the ult advantage several times. This self is going to come in over the top, but too far over the top. They use an Earth Shatter here, trying to get something done. Mendo finally gets a couple kills. I think that was Bunny Blaster Diva. Must have been, as he gets it going. They are fighting greedy here on the card. Agility has to be careful. He's discorded a beautifully patient Earth Shatter from Nomi, but no follow forward so far. Yeah, Agility jumps off the edge there as well. I don't know if he thought the fight was done, or if he's trying to make the little platform, yeah. but I don't think he can even jump that far. This is what happened also on Sanctum when he jumped off too. It, like He reset, and chat's telling us, oh, he was going to reset Said anyway, the fight wasn't necessarily super over when he reset. Agilities is on his own agenda as far as when he thinks the fight is over. That's twice now that they kind of could have brought it back. He jumped off by himself, so 
Uh, interesting. It's not the worst case scenario. They have it pretty far, but the problem is now they're going to be pushing into a Cloud9 team that has more alts than, than they do, and that's been a rare case. So yeah, and the Graviton comes in there as well, so all of Immortals pushing into that fight. Good biotic grenade, but Shawful gets himself two kills for the Deadeye now. Hunting down Hype. The Flash doesn't quite connect for him. Meanwhile, Mendo charging through. A lot of damage available for him, and why don't we see this Diva beforehand? It's working out so well for Mendo instead of that Roadhog now. Obviously, it's a Roadhog-less C9. They're using the Zayu here, and it's working out. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's definitely working out for them so far. Not a whole lot of progress being made on that last push for Immortals. It looks like they're going to try to take a different angle. This is, becomes very difficult on Eichenwald. Do you want to just rush through the castle uh, and get dropped on from above because you're getting up that high ground? Do you want to walk all the way around the sides? Do you take this high ground and fight up top? That looks like the option that they're going for right now. Romendo tries to knock some people off the bridge, but he can't quite get them through the parapets, and now he has the back array behind Kip. He wanted to come forward, or at least it looked like he did, but now no meat getting the nano boost. He's in a terrible position to, to do damage to multiple people, but he might get Mendo here as he charges him up against the wall. But though he puts himself way away from his team, a little bit out of position. Hyped finds Wolf, though, that's important. Still, a lot of players for C9 are ready here to defend. Now Lumi gets back, though, and he gets back in a big way. Three men, Earth Shadow coming through, charge in. Adam goes down. Shawfort managed to get towards Aethon, but that will be the second checkpoint reached here. Two minutes 29 on the clock here for Immortals to finish. It's a nice way to deal with the defense in an entrenched position as you start splitting up your team so that they have to split up to respawn. They threw their D.Va over to the cart, gave the Lucio some help over there too. That forced a response out of Cloud9. They had to send a couple over there. Then they started making a little more chaotic, little more segmented fight, making them fight off the top bridge and getting them out of the entrenched position, able to win that fight was Immortals. Now I'm backing up a little bit here as well. They realize they're not really in great shape. They're not missing too many players. They're all here. And now the wall comes in. Missed charge coming out there from Rip. Wolf's him back a little bit more. And agility to the sound barrier and the whole hog. He's coming forward. A lot of ultimates being used here. I don't blame you if you can't follow this action. But it was a dead eye in the back. Important one there for sure for managed to get a lot of health away, especially from Hype on that beat. He's been desuited. Agility is very, very deep in the mix. Double tank pushing towards him now. Hard pressed to stay alive. To be sure. Nomi on the payload there, shield very, very low. Hype is going to try and back up here, and this aggression on the defensive side for C9 is going to give them some time to breathe, a bit, a bit of a reprieve as well, as it will be Immortals backing out the castle. Well, one minute and about 15 seconds remaining for Immortals to try to push this final point. It is such a difficult point to re-establish entrance, and I suppose now that you have a couple tanks, it's not as bad, but two of them come in, they get walled off immediately. Nomi gets taken down, perhaps. No, Nomi somehow lives through that, gets the beast at the end, and they completely forget, like, just like a great day wall. Yeah, completely turn that fight. Nomi got nano boosted and healed up a heck of a lot. Aethon is very, very good at making sure that if he's going to follow up with the nano boost, there's always going to be the biotic grenade thrown on top to give the extra healing, the extra durability. And now, C9 pushing together. There is a group, and that is a big advantage for them. But look, Immortals are ready for them now. War comes up, and Kai Kai on the mate here. He doesn't last very long. Agility takes him down. Adam trying to dominate the high ground, and Rivers a little bit out of position here. A bit on his own. Shawfort trying to go from a dead eye from way back in the cloisters. Can't get anything. There's a bit of a Tight angle for him. And now it's a mess on the payload. I'll be honest, it's just a mess. It's a five man sound barrier here for the side of Immortals. They're going to push forward. No one from C9 is really getting there. Desperately, Kai Kai throws himself onto the payload for some stall. Adam also does the same here. But an Earth Shadow will secure this one. Blizzard comes out. Adam oh, gets the payload. That no. Oh. We'll get it. Yeah, I mean, they, they weren't probably going to win that fight, but getting down the next 11 seconds would have been nice for them to push it into overtime. I thought that Blizzard might do that at the very end, but uh, the play of the game right there is when they get locked out, they only get three inside the wall. The main wall does exactly what you want it to do on last point of Eichenwald, and they still keep those three alive. I had already called Nomi dead at that point in time, but you're right. Aethan saved his life twice over at least able to bring that back and from there the kill feed turned all red all immortals yeah i mean we saw the blizzard sort of use on that payload towards the end but the problem was it was just kai kai and adam remaining now if you're immortals and you are literally a hair's breadth away from finishing the blizzard doesn't really do much to dissuade you away from just hanging around because you know the rest of c9's reinforcements are going to be a while to come i mean for me Cloud9 more that, that's more on Cloud9 running Torb and Mercy on defense again and yep. it not really working out if they didn't do that and they win one team fight on yep. first point hold which is probably one of the hardest points to get through on offense they um, Immortals doesn't even complete the map so 
I think part of it is Cloud9 trying some few things. Uh, it, it worked a little bit better on Dorado, and maybe Torb will still work here, but we've seen it be okay on first point I can follow, but it didn't in that situation. And I think that was probably the biggest thing for Cloud9. It's just like, whether you're effective or not is so conditional as that Torbjorn as well. Turret placement, to the team, are the team ready for it? Do you get a Molten Core? Whereas if you play something else, like a May or something, it's like your effectiveness is only conditional on whether you are bad or not, right? At this level, I always feel like it's it's a more safer choice to go for something like a May or something else that is always going to be able to have an impact regardless of do I get my ultimate, do I stay alive, do we hold the points the first time? I can understand that the the payback you do get if your Torbjorn hangs around long enough, you can put a solid defense. But anyway, Hex, let's jump in here. It is going to be Mendo on the Genji here, sure four on the McCree. Yeah, uh, short force McCree is uh, high tier, so is Mendo's Genji. It's not necessarily kind of what you would expect to see run here. He's running a single flanker. We'll see if Mendo can really get to the back line to cause trouble. They also boost in and take this fight, but this is an aggressive defense. Goes right at him. Yeah, again, both teams going for this attack that involves running through with the Reinhardt shield. No maze in, in, in the game, I guess, so no one's worrying about sort of waiting on the other side of that first choke. Kaikai goes in. Does get hooked, but then throws up the defense matrix immediately here. Clack trying to do the same thing. He actually catches Adam on his way through. They're very clever. I don't know if he collided with him in mid-air. But Immortal's looking decent on this defense. Mendo is able to unsuit hype, so that's about all the Cloud9 are getting so far in his fight. And that's generally how the, the first play of Mike involved goes for, for the defense. When you're running uh, six actual heroes, it works out really well for you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. No, no don't, don't get me wrong, but please <laughs> I mean, I have to, I have to <laughs> see that there's a place for things like Torben Symmetra here, but when you've got I love, I love Torben Symmetra. No one loves Symmetra more than I, but I understand why people don't play her right now. I get it. And as good as Mendo is, he was just unable to make that Torb work. And I have to agree with Slapshoot. That 10 seconds uh, ended up really costing him. That's 10 seconds you were almost guaranteed if you run anything else. Anyway, so again. Still, yeah, still holding on the defense here with Cloud9 right now in a really good position with all short for takes a really cheeky high ground up and uh, gets spotted out by Hype, though. I can actually get charged. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be Earth Shadow coming over the top here as well. The self destruction, I say, doesn't catch anyone. A short force still has pole position. Gets a little flash on the wall type, but then is finally forced down the corridor. But Mendo had found Nomi and Aethan already in that fight, working through the Hunter's Lodge. And his point now halfway taken for C9. They should be able to finish it off here. Even Agility is realizing that he's a little bit low on health. Can't even decent Kai Kai being forced back and taken down. Adam, the one with the killing blow. Yeah, both snowball their ult advantage into a first fight one short for an Adam with their ults up as well. It'll be interesting to see if Mendo sticks on this Genji. It's been uh, effective enough getting you know, to the back line, causing a little bit of chaos. But, it, you know, it's not a hero that we see generally run a whole lot on Eichenwald, especially past first point. All right. We're going to see Mortals now set up on the castle. This is pretty standard, I think it's safe to say. And there's been no real hero switches for them. Grim Reality is still playing up on that McCree. And you could say the same for C9 here. They're going to play the Genji McCree still. Eyes on Mendo. He tried a bit of a cheeky flank earlier on. Didn't get much for it. And look at this. The fight starting here. Self-destruct thrown in and a dead eye being used. Still, Mendo gets caught by it. He was trying to find the back line. But Grim Reality catches him anyway. And Kai Kai in a 1v1 with agility is not going to end well. Gets suited. Another strike comes out here though, catches no one in particular. Back and forth stuff, but Grim Reality and Aethan still have the high ground control. Nomi charges out of danger, not getting any feeling for the moment as Aethan preoccupied on doing damage for the moment. We'll see now C9 group up and the payload is still moving. Yeah, they've had this high ground control, but they're not really getting a ton of damage done with it. Maybe they're not focusing the same target. Maybe the targets are just in a good spot. Adam was hugging that cart pretty close. Uh, Meadow's going to come up and cause a little bit of chaos up to them. That's getting a lot of free push. Gets them over the more perilous part on the other side of the bridge. And now Cloud9 has to, or actually Immortals has to decide. They have to go fight. They can't just sit up there the whole time. Yeah, and they're a long way from the payload here as well. So it's a risky engagement. Rip catches them out with the Earth Shatter. But a good response from Nomi. He gets the Earth Shatter. He nails it. And he nails Rip to the wall there. They'll be Rolling one on one for a little while here, but the real story is Mendo. Two kills for him in that fight, and again, it's sure for to follow up there. They're fighting in the actually uh, defenders spawn there on the first point, and they make it happen. Adam gets two, and they're gonna get that second checkpoint. Hex, a lot of time to play with here. They're, they're going very quickly right now. Looks really good for Cloud9, and I will say, Mendo, he got kills. The highlight for Mendo for me was just taking that high ground, jumping in their face, and hitting the deflect. It bought them about three seconds of chaos and immortals as they didn't know how to deal with Mendo, or if Mendo was gonna come in or go out, and that got them out of position on the high ground, gave them the free push under the bridge, and it put Immortals in a really rough spot of when they had to go fight. It seemed like the card had already gone past them. 
Yeah, no, it did. It had, and they were forced to run a long way to engage now. The door's gonna come down, and oh, so is Nomi. He flattens Rib like a pancake up against the wall. A good start to the fight. For sure, for Amendo were there. Mendo, such a big impact in these fights. He found Nomi. He got the finish at least with a swift strike. And now it still seems like C9 are taking a brief break. Just backing up for a moment, getting healthy. But Ethan catches Sure for inside the little tunnel before he can get through. This doesn't seem to be stopping C9, though. It's Mendo still on the front line, and they've got a self destruct going in. Who's gonna be caught? Oh! Beautiful. He's taken down. Now we have a 6v4, and that payload is rocking towards the end of the map with 3 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. The last 30 seconds were so important, too. Had Immortal been able to win that fight, then it's really hard to re-engage once that door had closed to get back into that fight there. So really nice for Cloud9 to be patient to get out of the fight when they needed to, to go heal up, as you called it. Beautiful die by Kai Kai onto the dead or dead eye in the back line. Grim Reality does take out Short for eventually. Now it's turning into a bit of a practice. Immortal is going to hold this. Yeah, very, very close towards the end now as well. And C9 needs to be pretty quick at getting back inside this castle. Otherwise, if we see a fairly forward defense... Oh, that's a beautiful hook. Wolf doesn't get away. But that's going to hurt. Because look at Kai Kai. He's being stored out as well in a big way. Defense Matrix, he can't do anything. He's discorded. He's being blocked. Oh, that's so annoying. And that means another 10 seconds before C9 even have ten men to, uh, six men to work with. Yeah, and the, you see them holding pretty far up here. I'm a little surprised they haven't switched over to a May because I think she's just so amazing on this point in particular to cut off walls, although it didn't work out ideally for Cloud9 last time. They're going to pretty much let them in for free, which is a little bit of a an issue there. They're going to have to back out towards the car here is Immortals. Two minutes for Cloud9 to be able to finish this map. I wanna, I'm surprised we don't see any switch towards May here from Immortals. Yeah. It's a possibility. It could work quite nicely for them here as well, especially defending at this stage. But a sound barrier is going to come in next. We're going to see a self destruct go over the top and catch no one there. Good evasion coming out from the start of C9. First Shadow does land, though, and Nomi's in the back line causing a big ruckus on his own. Looking for Mendo, but he's going to be frozen up here. Tough to get out of that one. Well, Nomi actually walls off and gets the run power charge onto Mendo. Core 4 takes out 8th, and there are fights going on all over the place, but that was just hilarious. Nomi is still in the back line. No one knew he was there. He swings the hammer through. Short 4 does die eventually, but should have died two minutes ago with two less kills. Oh, this is really nice, actually, from Immortals. It's like they're starting to build even a bit of a head of steam on this last point. The fact that Nomi kills Mendo in that case is, is a bit humorous, actually. He was frozen up, but does, uh, does manage to flatten him in the end. And there's about a minute to go. So C9 have a lot of ultimates to work with. Conditionally though, they need to stick. They really need to land these ones. The Earth Shatter, especially. Then I in from the backside here. We'll see if it's gonna be connected. Grim Reality hoping for a couple targets, but finds absolutely none. Well, Shortford dived him, and last time Shortford did that, he ended up paying for his life against that all, but this time the recall was there for Shortford to get out and bait out that ultimate. The Blizzard's gonna come down on the offense, that is Mendo, he does freeze Nomi yet again, but the Transcend is from Aethan, keeping everyone alive. Counter Transcend now coming in, keeping most of Cloud9 extremely healthy as they start to pick up a kill or two of their own, that is two kills that they need. You have to kind of full wipe here on last point Eichenball to be able to take it. Yeah, the stall's gonna be real here for Immortals if they get a chance to come back in. And Hyped is buying a lot of time. Eventually gonna be desuited, but Verbo's also up on that point there, and finally someone responds to Grim Reality up on the top. Side, that's sure for finds Nomi with the pulse bomb. Grim Reality gets Mendo, but falls straight after, and now it's a Sombra on the point. Agility's trying to stall it out for as long as they can, and now Aethan on the point. In fact, the time make is actually go to favor the side of Immortals here. Seven seconds left, still Verbal on the point. This is great stall. This is epic stall, in fact, now. The fact that now Nomi getting back on the point. There's multiple players, a self-destruct that's big. Who will it catch? No one though. Hype doesn't find anyone for it, and now C9 tries their life with a self-destruct. Still no one for them either. It's gonna be the Sombra back on the point, quickly taken down. Aethan again stalling in that May ice block. He should fall, he gets launched up with his own wall there, and finally, finally C9 get it done. But there will be no time bank remaining for them here. Very, very funny the way that Immortals managed to hold off there, and that is the nature of Stall in this game, especially on last point Aikenvalder. Yeah, they stole it forever. Uh, difference ends up only being 11 seconds, though, as the overtime did come down. So, uh, one point first push here. I think, let's see, who's going to be on the It'll offense? Be a draw, first? to be honest. Yeah, probably. It, it seems like that is the most likely of situations. We'll it's going to be Cloud9 on the offense first, so they are going to go with the, the offense that they just ran. 
I'm actually curious to see what Cloud9 wants to run on their defense after after the Torb, but you know, odds honestly under a minute, I don't hate the Torb on defense. Well, Which honestly, I... no. If for a minute, if you want to hold one push, like, yeah. that's actually okay in my opinion. You give yourself a shadow seventh man, essentially. So eventually, you know, if you could pull something out that the enemy team needs time to respond to, like, as in they can't take on first push, then I'm okay with it. Right. So yeah, I I can uh, both teams able to complete it, which is somewhat of a rarity. That last point can give teams all sorts of fits, but Maywall not coming in on the defense from one side, Maywall not being effective on the other side is kind of what made the teams allow it, but uh, definitely a better stall for Immortals there. So uh, Mendo did get off of that Genji, which he did pretty well on the Genji. I was a little surprised at it, but he made it work. Mendo, a talented player in a whole lot of things. We're going to go for the Roadhog. I mean, essentially, this is going to be which Roadhog gets the first hit. Yeah, I agree. And, and also getting hooks before the enemy Reinhardt shield is down is also massive, especially when time is of the essence here. And if you Cloud9, it absolutely is. The sand does drop through. In fact, uh, we'll have Hex looking at his pocket watch as well. That is how serious <laughs> it is. Going to press forward. Nomi on the charge. Bounces off the wall. Hits a flash and he goes down. This is a good start from C9. Getting rid of Nomi early is very, very big. Taika needs to be careful though. He was low. There was a biotic grenade. And oh, that's a beautiful hook on the ward. Sure, for on the outside of the point. But Verbo suffers a similar fate there. Mendo finds him. And Mendo's confused in this so far. Already, this point's being taken. And then does appear that... Yes, the mortals are going to struggle to get back on towards this point in time. And agility is hoping for the He's going to get more from that. But we find Mendo, not the target he wanted. He's going to pull him away. And hyped on his own on the point here. Transcendent comes out. It might be a point taken here for C9. In fact, it very much should with how long it is to walk. But the reinforcements are on the way. Reinforcements, but they are going to be slow coming here. And they are picking up kill after kill. Agility is the only one in the kill feed for Immortals as Shore Fork continues his reign of terror. They will grab this first point and now sticking on the cart. We'll see how far they can push it. This could end up being a deciding factor as well as we saw how good Immortals was on their first push on offense too. So really how far they can get it in this overtime period might be a decider of who wins this map. I really would have, honestly, I may on that first point hold for Immortals would have been good, right? You only got to hold, you only got to hold off a couple pushes, right? One yeah. wall halfway through an advancing team can win you a team fight there and then. It's not even that high risk. So I have to question the, the lack of May we're seeing right now. And I, I'd love to talk to uh, uh, maybe Slasher after we'll get his thoughts on him. Anyway, here comes the fight again. It's all about getting C9 off that point and making sure they don't make any progress. But that self struck finds nothing. Memory finds agility is now the sound barrier of C9. This is looking good. It's looking great for them as Shore Four is off of the Tracer, but his terror continues on McCree as he picks up three in a row for the Cowboy Killer. Four now, as Shore Four is putting on a masterclass in McCree. I would tend to agree with you. I, I think May was a 100% pick on this map for a long time, and teams have gotten away from her, so uh, I'm interested to see exactly why that is, uh, too, especially for this kind of first point hold. But they are making enormous progress here, all in overtime here. Their setting is such a distance that it's going to be tough for Immortals to beat. Immortals has to stop it here, because I can't imagine they're going to be able to beat second point. Self-destruct comes in. Oh, what was that? Grimiardi goes up the edge and with a big old boot there, sends him flying. And that's a pretty darn good start as well. Getting rid of that McCree at the start of the fight. May well be the paper you need to go forward. The Geordies is at the back line of C9 right now, and he did find a manage to find Shaw for, but it's more work to be done. And the bulk of C9 are together up on this point. Mendo got the camp very slow and he's on the body grenade. Don't be get set off the edge. Have a seat, Adam. Getting the boots. He's second in the fight. First to the McCree, then a Reinhardt. Oh, Kai Kai and Ripto go close. They get boots down by Hype. Kai Kai survives, but this should be C9 finally getting whittled down. But they have made such massive progress here. It's a really impressive push for Cloud9. And for one minute on Eichenwald to get it about 15 meters from second point, that might not be correct. I'm not used to meters. About, about uh, what, 50 feet uh, from the point. That's about 15 meters anyway. Uh, so yeah, really, really well done there. All right, let's, mention, Cloud9. let's talk about that main slasher. Yeah, what's, what's uh, up uh, with me? Well, well, well two things. I was going to mention before the second run through, even though that the first attack went pretty well for Cloud9, um, Mendo and Genji, they didn't win the point until the second or third team fight. So going Roadhog, as we saw, was a much better way for Cloud9 to run that. And as for me, yeah, it's still really good. I'm surprised that teams aren't running it more, especially considering Triple Tank is so prevalent right now. And you know Immortals is going to run it, so it looks like right now Shafor is going to be running May. This is the right call to make. Not only was the Torb Mercy kind of thing, you know, I can see an experiment for Cloud9 
Uh, but really, not only that was the wrong call, going May here is the right call. Cloud9 is going to feel pretty good about this. To have the <clears throat> the confirmation there from Slasher just seemed a bit strange, given that I guess that, you know, you do have D.Va now, but D.Va was the only hero in the team composition for, for C9 that could circumvent a May wall. So yeah. still can cut off the majority of the team. Okay, if you only isolate a D.Va, she can get away, but you can isolate a Reinhardt, just wreck him. You'll win the team fight there and then here, and that's going to put so much pressure on a team with only one minute. Let's see, though. Immortal's going to have to be pretty darn fast, and that's only the first start of their uphill climb here. Yeah, the only giving a lot of room. Yeah, that wall comes in in kind of an interesting angle. He puts it up vertically there, just kind of put it in lanes. And you generally put it uh, all the way to block up the door, so that's going to let them in. A flashbang over the shield on Rib gets Rib in a bad position as he gets hooked out. Surprisingly, lives longer than he should have though, but agility will notch the first kill for Immortals on their offense. I've been a little bit critical of Shaw for tonight and his May. I don't think that's out of that wall. I definitely think he wanted it uh, from left to right. But anyway, now it's looking good for Immortals in this first fight. They're pushing onto the point, and honestly, C9 don't have a chance to stall this really at all. They've got no one in the locale. They're not even going to bother trying gear, so things are looking okay for Immortals now. 20 seconds on the clock and counting down. They're not even in overtime yet, so they can make some decent progress here. But they'll be in a similar position. They'll be in overtime when the next fight starts anyway. I mean, I use the caster talk for interesting there on that May wall as he put it vertically <laughs> instead of sideways. I think that's just got to be a misclick at some point, right? I mean, there's no good reason to put a vertical that wall there. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's just see if it's all part of a bigger plan. I don't really know if I believe that, but Sure 4 again, looking for a wall. He needs to win a fight here and there. That's much better wall. He gets hyper agility is caught out on their own now, but a whole hulk is going to be coming in from agility. He's pretty frozen. He gets nothing from it. But in reality, in agility, he's actually, he did find Mendo with that one. So I did this speak. Self-destruct comes in. The Divas are taking each other down, and Wolf is desperately trying to heal his team up here. But it's only Adam and Kaikai, and they get Earth Shattered down here. Kaikai, no chance of getting up and actually getting back to sit there. He's got to be taken down. Look at this. Wolf, way out of position here. Falling. Yeah. Over now, and there's about 60 meters to go. Rope is good, but not 1v6 good, unfortunately. So that is a dead Zenyatta there. We're going to see where they want to posture up here. Uh, it looks like they're just waiting to get their full six. They're going to be very cautious on here. They might want to try to roll up over top, but I think that time has passed. Your high ground hold is over. Nope, never mind. They're going to go high ground, but this is a, an interesting it's position. This is, where, yeah, this is where Immortals found themselves in trouble before. I mean, they can't split Immortals, or Immortals split voluntarily, I guess, to deal with if they drop over the yeah. backside of the bridge. But what? Rip goes down, Adam goes down. Oh, I can't believe this is actually happening right now. Oh, sound very comes in there for Verbo and Grim Reality. The Dead Eye from the top side, he finds Wolf. Wolf goes down, Hack takes down Mendo as well. They can't go forward in the mix. He's between the payload and the hammer, and that's not good. He's going to pull it, gets these two, and Cloud9 have thrown it away. He'll will be able to take the map there, get that last checkpoint, and take it away. Two to one. Final score. What on? It was their map Five. pick, to be honest, but C9 looks so good after their round in extra time. I mean, okay, look, you can talk about the first run through, and if Cloud9 doesn't run Mercy Torbine defense, they probably win the map. But they put they themselves the in the best possible position on their in the OT session.